Hey Cancer and thanks for joining me. This is your reading for June 2016 for the time leading up to June and onward. I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are enjoying this live stream version of the show. So I think that that's a, that's a good way to do it and I hope it works well for you guys. Keeps me accountable plus it lets me do it at a specific time, namely 8 a.m. A PST uh, and also 10 a.m. So this is the second video that I'm doing um, and everything's going well. I hope you guys are having a nice time. The reason I'm doing the live stream is because I started doing a live stream channel which you guys can sub in the sidebar which is Varush um, Live and there you can uh, watch daily vlogs at 8 a.m. but usually 10 a.m. PST. If you miss that time you can watch it anytime in the daytime. We talk about different topics as well as uh, do some informal readings. I think I'll integrate celebrity readings. I used to do tons of celebrity readings on on uh, different celebrities and things that are going on so that's going to come back and then also um, for June we're looking at uh, really large Grand Cross energies so there's going to be two um, instances of Grand Cross happening in the first week of June from Ju June 1st to the 7th and then um, in the last last or third week June 19th through the 25th so the reason that I'm doing this uh, reading in this way is to recap everything that's been going on in your lives from uh, January until uh, June and then um, take a look forward and see where the energy is going just so you know if you have any aspects in Taurus you definitely want to check out that video because their reading was just insane like I want to be a Taurus and people are just leaving messages that they're jealous and I'm I'm pretty jealous too basically out of 12 cards we had 10 trumps so it, for those of you who are in the know will understand the significance of that besides that in June we're gonna see a conjunction between the Sun and uh, Venus and so that's a really beautiful aspect in your 12th house this is going to illuminate some things that may be hidden maybe a secret love will come forward for you or you will be illuminated as a secret love for someone else and so therefore this is a special time with this conjunction in such a spiritual house such as the 12th house Beyond that, uh, we have the summer solstice, of course, on June 20th. However, that's met with a grand cross. And so this is a full moon in Capricorn. Um, tough energy, but something that you can get through. Uh, new moon is on June 4th in Gemini. At that time, we're going to see another grand cross, but also a grand trine. The Grand Cross and the Grand Trine, one intercept is focused on your third house. The third house manages communication. Uh, early childhood education and short distance travel. So at the same time as you might be seeing opportunities to travel at this time, it will also be met with a lot of trials and tribulations. Ultimately, these trials and tribulations will lead to your development and progress into um, a better arrangement for yourself. So don't be shy in doing so. So let's begin the reading. Um, if you guys have been watching the live streams, you know that I have a chest and and this chest is full of uh, all sorts of cards I kind of got this idea from my friend named Abraham but he does it differently you can go to his shop and then he just lets you pick a card and pay two bucks for it and then take it home so what I did instead was just to put a bunch of cards in a box for readings just to really randomize the process so I don't really shuffle these but they're at random I don't know what what is what and so let's pick three cards for the oncoming uh, period of June to give us some guidance one two I know which this card is this is this is the card for Carol Herzer she's a card maker from Woodstock New York I'll show you guys. It's not a tarot card, but I know from the back what it is. So the first card that we have for Cancer is the Knight of Wands. This is the quick coming and going of the matters. This reminds you, Cancer, to be quick on your feet. Alternately, people who are fire signs may be coming in and out of your life. This could be a Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, but not necessarily so. This can be the onset of a quick moving relationship or also 
moving away from a relationship really quickly. So this can actually signify that there is some kind of double dealing with regard to a love partner. So if you are the person who's doing this, then check yourself and, and adjust your behavior. But if somebody around you is doing that, then, um, then just be aware or be, uh, be, have your, you know, uh, have your, uh, perception open to the prospect of that happening. Just so you know, Neptune is going direct, but that's in your ninth house of long distance travel and uh, higher education. This is going to really clarify some issues for you when it goes direct on the 13th of June. Um, about where you stand, uh, Jupiter has been confusing things quite a bit. It's in opposition to Jupiter right now in the third house. So you may figure out some things in a big way. So if you do feel like you need to come and go or or kind of do something else, keep in mind you won't want to wait about till mid-month before the first grand, grand Cross passes, before the Grand Trine dissipates once you absorb the positive effects of the Grand Trine and then see how that settles in with you and then make your choices about change and about possible movement. Okay, the next card, this is Carol Herzer's deck. This is a deck called The Spirit Speaks. The cards don't have meaning. They're just spirits, and so this spirit is with you this month, Cancer. They're beautiful cards. It's basically artwork, but there's not much to say about these cards when I read them. I have my impressions about them, and in a longer meditation, I would be able to derive some kind of conclusion. But if I were you guys, I would go by the energy of the card itself, the color scheme, the, the deep... Uh, purples and the blues and the white. There is a spirit that is with you through this whole process, divining from the universe and bringing forward protective energy for you. So as you're going through your month, come back and watch this close up so you can absorb the energy of the card. She is a beautiful card maker and I enjoy her work very much. And the last card is the six of discs. So the six of discs, this is the Alchemania tarot. This is from Japan. And so this card reminds you at the end of the day, it's all about give and take. And you have Mercury in your 11th house of friendship and Pluto in your 7th house of partnership. Mercury is talking about communication with other people and maybe about the equal two-way street with other people. While Pluto uh, reminds us in partnership that control is something that is to be used very gently and with uh, with uh, with distance. So Pluto in the seventh house in particular will be very relevant to this. Also, uh, Saturn is in your sixth house and is moderating how you behave on a day-to-day -day basis. And so this may give you some kind of um, some kind of restriction or or demands on you in order to how to manage your relationships and how to maintain your relationships in a fair and equitable sense. So no more one-way street for you, whether you're the only one giving or whether other people are the only people that are giving around you. You're moving on from a place to a more equitable distribution of wealth between yourself and others. So this is a part of your learning scheme. You have Chiron in the ninth house of higher learning and education. I feel this is closely connected to this um, new Neptune moving into direct motion in your chart. Also, uh, Mars will go direct at the end of the month on June 29th. Um, in the fifth house of children, as well as personal pleasure and drive, also relationships. So you may be coming to terms with, you know, this kind of balance between yourself and somebody else. So I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if like certain cards like justice or the lust card show up in your reading today, Cancer. Okay. So the first set of 12 cards that I'm getting, uh, picking for you is for the first six months of the year and June. This will represent the 12 houses of the zodiac and will kind of consolidate the energy that you've been working through. I suggest you guys listen to this carefully. This still applies in June and it gives you a good perspective on what was most important in your life and you can see how you connect to the energy while you watch. So I'm just shuffling. I'm using the Margaret Peterson Tarot. This is a, a very beautiful deck. I don't know how it films because of the detail. It's a high abstract deck and um, it's very, very beautiful. And I think the cards are coming up okay. But um, 
I definitely recommend it if you can find it because it's kind of out of print, I believe. Although it was reprinted two years ago in Germany, so if you guys are in love with it as much as I am, then this is how you can get it. And it's, I think in Argentina I found some decks. I'm looking for a purple border deck of this, so if you have access to one, if you want to sell it, then please email me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have a bit of a cold today. I didn't get much sleep last night, so sorry about my voice, but I really committed to finishing these readings in the time frame that I have outlined for you. Also, today's reading is um, really in line with um, Mercury retrograde. I want to show you guys that even when there is five planets that are in retrograde motion, such as has begun now, um, you can still definitely work through energy and it's a great time to reflect and build upon the experiences that you've had. So it's a great cathartic time for us, including Mercury retrograde. So for, for card readings and sort those sorts of things, depending on your chart, some people are heavily affected uh, by this transit. I know one reader actually uh, may not even be doing videos or has reworked her schedule for this time. So I'm not speaking to her situation at all. Um, depending on your chart and how uh, these energies affect you, make smart choices for you. But I find retrograde periods a great time to consolidate. I'm, I really like, I have a lot of placements in the ninth and 10th house. So I really like to consolidate ideas and like think about it or enumerate. Okay. By the way, the busy days in uh, June will be the th third through the fifth. On the seventh, we have a kite with a focus on Mars in the fifth house. Um, take a look at my, uh, Varush live stream channel for more details on that on the 7th of June, the 9th, the 11th, on the 15th we see a Yod with a focus on Mars as well, which is going to be explained in the live stream. On the 20th is summer solstice, but the energy is weighed down with the Grand Cross. And then the energy lifts with the second Grand Trine in Earth on the 30th, okay? So let's take a look through the chart and I'll comment lightly on the astrology from here on in. So in your first house, we see nine of cups. So this is really wonderful and a beautiful omen for you, Cancer. This is an affirmation of your personality and where you want to take things. So if you are Cancer, Cancer rising, or if you just want to wish, this is the time to make a wish and, and hope for yourself and somebody else that your wish comes true. So put it in your heart and direct it at someone that you care about or that cares about you. Definitely wishes work better when you are in tandem with other people, when you're not solely wishing for yourself, but also wishing for others. So don't worry about anybody else wishing for you. What Wish for others, wish them well, wish well for yourself, and these things will manifest. In terms of your personality, there's a huge affirmation going on right now in the first six months of the year. Um, with regard to how you conduct yourself. There's a big pat on the back, on Cancer's back, with regard to how they approach things, with regard to their disposition. They're getting a big old thumbs up for uh, for the way that they are. So overall, they feel as though um, there's a huge affirmation for the way they do things. And so this builds up self-esteem and encourages more of the same. In the second house, is the money house and here we see the four of cups so there's definitely an emotional offer being given to you out of nowhere in the first six months of the year something that you never had expected is on the table and you're going to go for it so this could be a new relationship this could be um if it's not a new relationship and it has to do with money or if it is a new relationship it'll be closely tied with money and your ability to make money if it's not a new relationship then it will be something that is given through emotion so a financial opportunity that is given through affect which means that someone cares a lot about you and through those those feelings for you is giving you that kind of break or hope okay so it's an emotionally driven offer or deal that's come up for you probably more than one time because this is a summary of six months 
in the third house. This is a key house for you right now. And we have Jupiter transiting with the North Node in Virgo. This is giving you benefit and hope in lots of new directions with regard to uh, your uh, opportunity, short distance travel, communication. If you're a writer of any kind, this is a wonderful time to write because you're getting both this uh, Grand Cross and Grand Trine energy. Grand Trine is supportive. Grand Cross is, um, I wouldn't say not supportive, but definitely a more conflict driven or oppositionally driven energy. So that provides for wonderful, interesting uh, writing, particularly fiction writing. So let's see what's here. The Daughter of Coins. The Daughter of Coins represents a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, young woman. This would be the onset of a new project or a new idea. So if you are looking to write, if you are looking to set up some kind of new new path for yourself, then this is a, a great seed of the idea that you're working through. Make sure that you're writing down your ideas at this time because Daughter of Coins ideas are fleeting. So they may be in your mind and then all of a sudden they'll, they'll go away and excuse me, disappear from your life in some way. So it's important that you keep um, on point with that. Remember that the energy that you're evolving to is the six of discs, which is this two-way street. It's not a one-way street anymore for you, whether you are the one who's giving or the one who's receiving. The fourth um, house, this is your house and home. We have no aspects in your house and home uh, cancer and here we see the six of swords so with regard to issues of the house you're going to be very good at re recognize excuse me you're going to be very good and stealth at recognizing the things that aren't working and moving on to more successful ways of conducting yourself um, this is this includes moving on from circumstances that are no longer serving you remember this is a very strategic uh, card it is often called science, particularly in the Crowley decks. And so this represents the act of logically making decisions that are of betterment to your improvement to you and your life. Okay. The fifth house here represents um, children. It represents passion. It represents romantic relationships. Here we see a retrograding Saturn moving through uh, the fifth house in Scorpio until it reaches uh, direct a motion on at the end of the month on June 29th. This is going to be the last ditch effort to improve any past relationships before you move forward and make make a stand or make some changes. Here we see the emperor. So the emperor represents the father. This may be a, an emphasis on your relationship with your father or a relationship with your own children through the role of a patriarchy. So when you're in charge and so forth. This can actually represent that your boyfriend-girlfriend relationship is improving into a, a marriage or something very quite serious. You're looking at um, serious relationships and serious uh, arrangements for yourself are important for you right now and you're thinking about the future, about how to make things work in the long run. <coughs> so this is the energy leading up until June. Um, so yeah, uh, the fifth house represents passions, the drive, and your drive is to create stability around yourself and comfort. Here is the, the sixth house, sorry. The sixth house is fun, but you have Saturn retrograde through the sixth house at this time. This is one of the points of the double grand cross that's happening. And, um, it's restricting and being very hard for you on you with regard to diet and exercise and day-to-day -day tasks. You really have to keep on point with what you have to do day-to-day -day and you must be eating well or you will suffer the consequences of not doing so. So here we see the Three of Cups. This is very supportive. This is saying that you celebrate and enjoy your time at this at this instant through June. Um, that overall this is a fun and, and happy energy that you're celebrating. Make sure with the Three of Cups that you are not celebrating too much because especially with the Saturn transit, it's going to really put you um, in your place with regard to consequences. Uh, so really take care of yourself. Uh, enjoy yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Have fun. Allow the easygoing life to wash over you um, as you have been and join in together with friends on a regular basis to relax and enjoy. 
The next card represents the seventh house. This is the partnership house. And for Cancer, the, the retrograde Pluto is always an issue and will be so for the next several years, as we've talked about before. Just so you know, Cancer, um, through April, May, and June, we see a grand trine in Earth. And one of the points on that grand trine is Pluto, which represents that there is some kind of lift energy with regard to your relationships and partnerships with other people. So you would have seen a clearing, a parting of the clouds, a clearing of ways with regard to your partnership dynamics in these months, which is really lifting and elevating Pluto up to its optimal. When Pluto is in a house, it represents basically um, huge inclines and declines in energy. So that there can be a really um, auspicious time and then there can be a real harsh and really difficult energy. In fact, it's probably the most scaled um, energy that affects a house. And so therefore things can be just amazing and over the top while at the same time they can become quite devastating. And so for partnerships, this can be a little bit daunting and I know lots of cancers have suffered the consequences of this Pluto transit but now it looks as though the time is to give you some blessings let's see what card we have okay so eight of coins is really good uh, with regard to partnership it says basically uh, you are applying yourself in a careful manner you're working day to day in order to make things work there's no surprises there's no uh, giant changes and shifts there's nothing to be on guard for and this will continue through june as you quit qu um sorry consistently build up your relationships and and learn how to uh, behave equitably and fairly and contributing properly to partnerships in your life in the eighth house is change but you don't have any transits here we see the two of feathers so there is going to be some options or there have been some options for you with regard to endings and beginnings. You may not see the full consequence of the decisions that you are making, but you're feeling pretty good with that. There's also peace with regard to other dynamics such as other people's money coming into your life and even your sex life. So there is this kind of uh, probably de-emphasized um, de-emphasis on seeing uh, the outcomes of of trying to um, achieve certain things in your life with regard to those domains okay this is all the time leading up until June so now the next uh, the next card represents the ninth house this is where Neptune is going to go direct in uh, June 13th or ne Neptune's going retrograde sorry about that this is the kind of stuff that Mercury retrograde causes. So whenever I said uh, Neptune's going direct, just change that around. Neptune is going retrograde from June 13th through November 19th. But here we see the Seven of Feathers. This is the Seven of Swords. You know, <coughs> what's the use thinking? Never a good thing in the ninth house. There's been a lot of giving up that you've been doing, Cancer. There's opportunity for you out there, but you haven't been seeing... Um, or willing to take on the opportunity thinking it's too big for you or over your head. This could be the influence of um, Chiron. Chiron can be really daunting you at this time and you may be feeling as though its requirements are kind of bigger than what your capabilities are. Uh, this is something that is a habitual pattern for you that you're working out over several years. You're coming to the end of that transit. So that means that you're going to be coming to some kind of positive conclusions or outcomes with regard to this transit and how it how it how it affects you so finally you'll begin overcoming these ideas of the fact that um, what is your agency or your philosophy of kind of complacency or giving up on things you'll become more and more resilient to this but until june you still have felt very kind of overwhelmed philosophically uh, with regard to long distance travel feeling very um, very inspired by huge influences on you and really kind of confused um, by the possibilities that there are out there. <clears throat> the next card represents the 10th house. Sorry about my throat. <coughs> so the 10th house represents the father of flames. This is a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries. This could be you, Cancer, taking on a position of 
kind of spiritual authority with regard to other people. You represent this high vibration and an energetic principle to others. People look to you for that kind of energy, the fire energy. So look to uh, your own chart to find out where this is strongest in your chart, where you have placements in fire. This can also represent that a Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries person, male, could come into your life and co-rule with you, and you can take a lot of points from them on how to um, how to handle the circumstances that you're involved in. This house rules a uh, career and um, and also your social status, so you're really kind of magnificent in how you do things. Uranus is in Aries in the 10th house for you, Cancer. It's unexpected. But which means that there's no aspects forming to it, but it has this kind of quality that it creates an, an original way of achieving results. So it's important for you to try really hard to achieve results in a kind of a backdoor way or finding some alternative approach to how to manage things. In the 11th house, this is your house of friendship. You have Mercury at transiting Taurus, and this is probably the worst card that I've got so far for, uh, for any of the signs uh, that I've read for, so just brace yourself. This, remember, this energy is from January until June, so it may have passed for you and may be passing now, but with regard to friends, we see the Nine of Feathers, which is the Nine of Swords which means that trust between yourself and others is waning or not sure about who to believe in and how much. <clears throat> Maybe even in June, you'll see yourself communicating with others in a more trusting way. And through those communications, build trust up for yourself a little bit more. But overall, remember that this is a, a difficult transit, but one that once you once you live through it, you'll be kind of vindicated and it'll um, alleviate any problems in your life. Remember, a lot of this has to do with you. It doesn't mean that you have to trust everyone blindly. This means that you're reforming who you trust, how, and why. And that's a really important thing to learn to do. So if you're having feelings of distrust towards others, or if you're feeling uncomfortable with the way that your relationships are going, and your mind is wandering about where things are going and how, remember, figure out why that's happening. What What is it about those relationships that's causing you to feel so uncomfortable? And then once you identify that, both within yourself or outside of yourself, then you'll be able to change your patterns and grow from that. Remember, this is going to be moving, into, this will be happening until June. So after June, we'll see where things go. And the 12th house, of course, we have Venus and the sun in the 12th house for you, Cancer. Um, this is the house of the residual and spiritual self, and here we see Jupiter. So you don't really need people at this time. You are transcending onto a higher spiritual form. Great opportunities for those of you who are looking for a relationship. Um, there's definitely opportunity for yourselves to become Jupiter or husband, or if you are uh, a woman, then you will be shown to Jupiter, which is which is wheel of fortune. So you will be kind of the veil will be lifted and you will be exposed from underneath the surface of the 12th house. So there is a lot of nuance that's going on in your reading cancer. There's a lot of opportunity. Overall, it's a much more calm first six months of the year than the other signs. However, it does have its high points. The emphasis on family is highlighted in your fifth house, so that means that your relationships could be coming more serious. This twelfth house is beautiful with lots of good fortune and luck coming to you um, through the, the beginning of the year and kind of um, lighting away a torch uh, for you to go down. And of course, the nine of cups in the first house is really beautiful. You go through things with the right disposition, right feelings about yourself and who you are, and that's really half the battle. This is a very important house in general, in astrology and tarot, and so therefore I'm very happy you have that there. Of course, friends may not be on point for you, but your best bet to deal with that is just to take a look at your position and vis-a-vis -vis those friends and who you are vis-a-vis -vis them and who they are to you and what actually is not working, okay? I just noticed something that you have an opposition between 
the nine of swords and the emperor here. So there might be a moving away from friends towards more serious relationships, towards your own husband or towards being a husband. And so therefore this is the backlash that you may be feeling as you move away from your social environments to a more private family life, okay? Regardless of your marital status right now, there might be an emphasis on moving towards kind of more serious relationships and away from just socializing. And that's okay, that's a natural phase in life. So n the next I'm gonna use the Golden Gomera Tarot. And so um, this is going to be for the time from June until the end of the year. So it's just one card per house. I can't fan them out obviously because of the cards that are on the table, but we'll just pick them for you. Anyway, I just want to say thank you guys for watching the videos so much. I think you guys were like already, it's the beginning of the month and I'm already at like 15,000. So you guys are doing really great and I hope you guys give me likes and watch these videos lots too. I hope that they're helping you along. So yeah, the support has been really wonderful and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Okay. Okay, so these cards are going to represent the time moving forward. What attitude you want to take on, what you should be looking forward to, etc. So in the first house, the original card was the Nine of Cups, and here we see the Nine of Discs. So this is a really wonderful combination. So your wonderful attitude and emotional state is going to produce for you a place of confidence and assuredness. You feel like you're on top of the world, like you have great financial resources and that you are growing those really well. In the second house, this represents the money house. Remember, there's no aspects here. We began the year with the Four of Cups, which represents offers coming through out of nowhere. And the outcome is the Two of Wands. So maybe not too much action with regard to money, but you are getting some really deep perspectives about where you want to see things. You're really able to study and, and draw conclusions about your observations at this time. The third house represents communication, brothers and sisters, short distance travel. Here you see Jupiter and North Node in Virgo. And we begin with the daughter of coins who represents a Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo, as, or maybe a new project or idea, something that is stemming um, in your life. And here we see the five of swords in the uh, moving forward. This will happen because Jupiter will move on to Libra in uh, September, so this is a, a reasonable energy to expect. Make sure that you're not being too forceful with other people around you or you may overshadow their will and therefore cause some kind of disruption in your relationship. So your important, the important message with this Five of Swords is to back off your relationships with brothers and sisters. Maybe they're going through a harder time than you. Maybe they are, you know, um, somehow, um, limited in a way that you are not and so therefore you have to uh, extend to them that kindness and generosity of spirit and um, be very cautious with how you present your success and your ideas at this time um, yeah just use caution the next uh, house is the fourth house the fourth house represents house and home we have six of feathers really um, skillfully moving on from circumstances that are less advantageous to circumstances that are better for you. Uh, so moving on to smooth water. The card is Sagittarius. You will continue to combine energies to produce wonderful results. This is a great time of combining. You can combine various different things in order to produce a new outcome, which is wonderful in the home. You can new introduce new ideas, introduce new feelings, and so you can change the pace of things in your home life uh, quite a bit and still be successful in doing so. So take a focus on your home life. Even though there's no aspects here at this time um, in June, you definitely uh, want to pay attention to it. And definitely from September moving on, you will see Jupiter in this house, which will provide you more opportunity to do that. In your house and home, we see the, the sign of Sagittarius come through. So watch out for Sagittarian people to make an influence on you. 
In the fifth house, we see Mars retrograde in Scorpio. We see the emperor. This will, this energy will uh, become stronger as Mars goes direct at the end of June and transits um, the house once again throughout July. Uh, but let's see what the energy moving forward is. Ace of Wands, this is to be expected. So for those of you who are planning on having kids, this is a great time to try. Also, if you are not in a relationship and want to try something more serious, Scorpio is going to motivate you and Mars is going to give you the ability to say the right thing at the right time. Take a chance, uh, Cancer. You definitely might see really positive results. You're coming from a place of Emperor to the Ace of Wands. It's, it's renumerating in your head, inside your head. And then you're able to bring that forward and begin something new. So take that chance. The energy is very opportune for you at this time. Also, this aspect is creating a trine energy to, Chir to Chiron, which is the wounded healer in the ninth house. Um, this means that this is the kind of give up card. I give up seven of, seven of um, swords. So maybe um, this kind of gentler energy, a little bit... Um, a little bit less direct. You need to overcome some of your own doubt and this is maybe a good time for you to prove to yourself in a way that you can do it, that you can achieve. I'm looking forward to seeing what this card is. So here we've got to the sixth house, which I really like. We have Saturn in uh, the sixth house going retrograde. We begin with the three of cups, which is celebration, not too much, but having fun is good. And here we see the Eight of Wands. This is relationships coming quickly in our day-to-day -day activities. So uh, this is love coming quickly in our lives and messages coming to and fro. So, so someone or something may be bringing you into close contact or consistent contact with fun and loving energy that is lifting you up and sparking your interest. This will be highlighted when Mars goes through the sixth house, probably in July and August. And um, when it does so, then it'll give an extra opportunity for you to push forward with loving relationships and sparks on in your day-to-day -day life. Continuing with partnerships, this is the big house. This is Pluto's transit, retrograde transit of your seventh house. We begin with a very stable eight of coins. This is very nice, Cancer. One step at a time kind of card. The next card we have is the Hermit. This represents uh, the sign of Virgo, but this can also represent that this, sorry about that flash. This can op also represent that um, this is a time for you to gather your resources and knowledge, the things that you have accrued about partnership and move slowly towards a path. This may be uh, to do with um, being alone for about six months or the rest of the year while you go on a path that works for you, that's stable for you. So you may feel as though this is a good time to be alone, to go down your path alone while you, you get yourself stronger and get yourself ready for the right relationship. Remember the um, the hermit is carrying a lantern and traditionally the lantern has the star in it. The star represents destiny and the soulmate. So it's like allowing yourself to walk through life in whatever capacity the life wants you to walk through it as, even alone, in order to get to where you are meant to be. Okay? The eighth house represents uh, fast endings. Very kind of calm uh, beginning of the year with the two of feathers here. It's saying basically that there could have been some opportunities with a couple different options. Uh, maybe some kind of confusion about exactly which way to go but nothing's over the top or too frustrating in the oncoming energy you see the seven of wands stick to what you believe in if something needs to end and it's with regard to your valor with regard to your strength of character and especially if somebody is questioning your um the quality of your character etc remember you have the nine of coins here for the rest of the year just just shut it down because later on they'll challenge that again and if they if and maybe at that point in time you won't be in such a advantageous position so you're very much sticking up for what you believe in and this extends to uh, finishing relationships and circumstances that are not doing you justice this is also um, moving on from the two of feathers you know what to believe in and you need to move forward there's a, a lot more confidence with regard to change at this time also sexually you may be more uh, advantageous 
what adventurous or you may be uh, willing to kind of put yourself out there. Um, the seven of wands says that it's going to, if it's coming from an honest place, then it's going to do you justice and do you nice things. So here we see the ninth house. This, uh, we begin the ninth house with the seven of feathers. This is a, I don't know what to do. I might let certain things go because they're not working for me. It's be kind of being nitpicky, um, confused. Um, when Neptune goes retrograde, it's going to allow you to bring focus to your life and, and awareness. And this is a close interplay between Neptune and Chiron, which are transiting together in your ninth house. This is not an aspect to look over. I know I've talked about it before. This is a great time for you to um, cure any um, philosophical malaise that you have, like with regard to like, like an existential crisis or some kind of philosophical issues that you can't reconcile. So as this, t this long transit happens, you may actually iron out some ideas that are kind of bouncing around in your head that are causing you discomfort in the long term. So forgive yourself for the first six months about being a little bit complacent, about falling in line a little bit too much, giving up on your dreams. Moving forward, you have the Three of Cups. This is a double up to Three of Cups here in the sixth house. So it's time for you to kind of enjoy yourself, forgive yourself, and celebrate your knowledge. This is three companions joining together along the road to share a drink. And so basically they all bring their information that they have gathered from their journey and they're sharing it together, three friends. So allow yourself that kind of... Um, celebration or a moment to celebrate and have joy for what you've learned because with that joy you'll be able to elevate your thinking and think forward towards other journeys that you may take in the future. So in this way definitely uh, positive thinking really helps and can really create opportunities as the right disposition towards opportunity is built through gratitude for the things that you have had experienced in the past. So here in the 10th house, we have Uranus. We begin with the father of flames. So this kind of kooky old goat who is, uh, you know, at his house welcoming everyone in. Everybody admires him for his good nature and positive affect. And here we see the king of discs. So you transform, it looks like, in the latter part of the year where there's an emphasis on money and financial stability. I think you come into your own position with regard to wealth and acumen uh, and you are no longer kind of scrambling for money at this time. This can also represent the influence of a Virgo Taurus or Capricorn male in your life, someone with whom you can share this kind of quality and take on that type of rulership. Okay. The 11th house represents uh, friendship and relationships. Remember, we had the Nine of Swords leading up to this time. Moving forward, new friend, a Page of Wands. So this can represent a Sagittarius, Leo, or Aries. A youthful energy. You will take chances with people. The relationships that you had were not working. And so, therefore, you will be a little bit more free-spirited and willing to take uh, chances in new directions. The next card is um, the 12th house. So this is the last house we need to talk about. This represents uh, the residual or um, also spiritual context or uh, changes of luck, changes of fortune. Uh, we see Jupiter here, good luck, good fortune coming through. In this house we see in June um, the Sun and uh, Venus uh, transiting together in a conjunction bringing light to the dark recesses of your life and cleaning it out. So this is a wonderful transit for you. And also quite opportune in terms of finding um, uh, like hidden love or like the needle in the haystack sort of thing. Some, some random event can find you um, in proximity to the right person uh, or be found as the right person uh, depending on the arrangement that's happening in your life. And so moving forward, we see the King of Cups. So you may find yourself having a spiritual moment. This represents Scorpio, Pisces, and Cancer. Uh, there's a lot of kings in your life. So there's a lot of themes of management and uh, controlling um, your your circumstances. If you date men, then there will be a lot of suitors coming through your life in the different houses that we've 
mentioned, but the King of Cups represents kind of coming into your own, realizing what your value is and being ready to offer that to other people or being receptive to that from someone else. So there's a spiritual revolution going in your life, Cancer, and I think that you are going to be transformed in a very beautiful way. So this really gives context to the Nine of Feathers here, saying don't really worry about the people who are leaving because where you're going is much more beautiful and prosperous. This is a very level-headed reading. It's not over the top with regard to like uh, fireworks or some magic happening, but as, as a flow of life, it's a very admirable reading with a lot of emotional payoffs and uh, financial opportunity, a little bit of a new beginning, some new friends. So I hope you guys have a wonderful end of the year. Just as a last little um, reading, I've been doing this with my friend Kate and she, um, we pick a card. I think it was my idea, but I did it with her the first time. So I pick a card from, from this where um where and actually kate's a cancer so if kate if you're watching hello but anyway um i pick a card just to find out what's the most important energy that you should be aware of just to tie everything out i'm not looking i promise i'm looking i'm gonna stop looking cancer let's see oh, okay Okay, interesting. So Eight of Wands is the most important energy. Allow new love into your life. Remember, we have the, we have the, um, the Page of Wands. There's a lot of fire energy in your life right now. The Page of Wands came through in your 11th house. This is friendship. So this is you taking a chance, right? You taking a chance on others and being kind of easy going with regard to relationships. So open yourself up, let love in and have a really nice 2016. Thank you so much for joining me Cancer. I wish all of you uh, the best of luck. Thank you for supporting me. Make sure to give me a like and a subscribe and share with your friends if you don't mind. Okay, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey Cancer and thanks for joining me. This is your reading for June 2016 for the time leading up to June and onward. I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are enjoying this live stream version of the show. So I think that that's a, that's a good way to do it and I hope it works well for you guys. Keeps me accountable plus it lets me do it at a specific time, namely 8 a.m. Uh, PST uh, and also 10 a.m. So this is the second video that I'm doing um, and everything's going well. I hope you guys are having a nice time. The reason I'm doing the live stream is because I started doing a live stream channel, which you guys can sub in the sidebar, which is Varush um, Live. And there you can uh, watch daily vlogs at 8 a.m., but usually 10 a.m. PST. If you miss that time, you can watch it anytime in the daytime. We talk about different topics as well as uh, do some informal readings. I think I'll integrate celebrity readings. I used to do tons of celebrity readings on, on uh, different celebrities and things that are going on. So that's going to come back. And then also um, for June, we're looking at uh, really large Grand Cross energies. So there's going to be two um, instances of Grand Cross happening in the first week of June from June, June 1st to the 7th. And then um, in the last last or third week, June 19th through the 25th. So the reason that I'm doing this uh, reading in this way is to recap everything that's been going on in your lives from uh, January until uh, June, and then um, take a look forward and see where the energy is going. Just so you know, if you have any aspects in Taurus, you definitely want to check out that video because their reading was just insane. Like, I want to be a Taurus and people are just leaving messages that they're jealous. And I'm I'm pretty jealous too. Basically, out of 12 cards, we had 10 trumps. So it, for those of you who are in the know will understand the significance of that. Besides that, in June, we're going to see a conjunction between 
the sun and uh, Venus. And so that's a really beautiful aspect in your 12th house. This is going to illuminate some things that may be hidden. Maybe a secret love will come forward for you or you will be illuminated as a secret love for someone else. And so therefore, this is a special time with this conjunction in such a spiritual house such as the 12th house. Beyond that, uh, we have the summer solstice, of course, on June 20th. However, that's met with a grand cross. And so this is a full moon in Capricorn. Um, tough energy, but something that you can get through. Uh, new moon is on June 4th in Gemini. At that time, we're going to see another grand cross, but also a grand trine. The Grand Cross and the Grand Trine, one intercept is focused on your third house. The third house manages communication, uh, early childhood education, and short distance travel. So at the same time as you might be seeing opportunities to travel at this time, it will also be met with a lot of trials and tribulations. Ultimately, these trials and tribulations will lead to your development and progress into uh, a better arrangement for yourself so don't be shy in doing so so let's begin the reading um, if you guys have been watching the live streams you know that I have a chest cathartic time for us including mercury retrograde so for for card readings and sort those sorts of things depending on your chart some people are heavily affected uh, by this transit. I know one reader actually um, may not even be doing videos or has reworked her schedule for this time. So I'm not speaking to her situation at all. Um, depending on your chart and how uh, these energies affect you, make smart choices for you. But I find retrograde periods a great time to consolidate. I'm, I really like, I have a lot of placements in the ninth and 10th house. So I really like to consolidate ideas and like think about it or enumerate. Okay. By the way, the busy days in uh, June will be the th third through the fifth. On the seventh, we have a kite with a focus on Mars in the fifth house. Um, take a look at my, uh, Varouche live stream channel for more details on that on the 7th of June, the 9th, the 11th, on the 15th we see a Yod with a focus on Mars as well, which is going to be explained in the live stream. On the 20th is summer solstice, but the energy is weighed down with the Grand Cross. And then the energy lifts with a second Grand Trine and Earth on the 30th, okay? So let's take a look through the chart and I'll comment lightly on the astrology from here on in. So in your first house, we see nine of cups. So this is really wonderful and a beautiful omen for you, Cancer. This is an affirmation of your personality and where you want to take things. So if you are Cancer, Cancer rising, or if you just want to wish, this is the time to make a wish and, and hope for yourself and somebody else that your wish comes true. So put it in your heart and direct it at someone that you care about or that cares about you. Definitely wishes work better when you are in tandem with other people, when you're not solely wishing for yourself, but also wishing for others. So don't worry about anybody else wishing for you. What Wish for others, wish them well, wish well for yourself, and these things will manifest. In terms of your personality, there's a huge affirmation going on right now in the first six months of the year. Um, with regard to how you conduct yourself. There's a big pat on the back, on Cancer's back, with regard to how they approach things, with regard to their disposition. They're getting a big old thumbs up for uh, for the way that they are. So overall, they feel as though um, there's a huge affirmation for the way they do things. And so this builds up self-esteem and encourages more of the same. In the second house, is the money house and here we see the four of cups so there's definitely an emotional offer being given to you out of nowhere in the first six months of the year something that you never had expected is on the table and you're gonna go for it so this could be a new relationship this could be um, if it's not a new relationship and it has to do with money or if it is a new relationship it'll be closely tied with money and your ability to make money if it's not a new relationship then it will be something that is given through emotion so a financial opportunity that is given through affect which means that someone cares a lot about you and through those, those feelings for you is giving you that kind of break or hope okay so it's an emotionally driven offer or deal that's come up for you probably more than one time because this is a summary of six months 
in the third house. This is a key house for you right now. And we have Jupiter transiting with the North Node in Virgo. This is giving and Pluto in your seventh house of partnership. Mercury is talking about communication with other people and maybe about the equal two-way street with other people. While Pluto uh, reminds us in partnership that control is something that is to be used very gently and with uh, with uh, with distance. So Pluto in the seventh house in particular will be very relevant to this. Also, uh, Saturn is in your sixth house and is moderating how you behave on a day-to-day -day basis. And so this may give you some kind of um, some kind of restriction or or demands on you in order to how to manage your relationships and how to maintain your relationships in a fair and equitable sense so no more one-way street for you whether you're the only one giving or whether other people are the only people that are giving around you you're moving on from a place to a more equitable distribution of wealth between yourself and others. So this is a part of your learning scheme. You have Chiron in the ninth house of higher learning and education. I feel this is closely connected to this um, new Neptune moving into direct motion in your chart. Also, uh, Mars will go direct at the end of the month on June 29th um, in the fifth house of children, as well as personal pleasure and drive also relationships. So you may be coming to terms with, you know, this kind of balance between yourself and somebody else. So I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if like certain cards like justice or the lust card show up in your reading today, cancer. Okay. So the first set of 12 cards that I'm getting, um, uh, picking for you is for the first six months of the year and June. This will represent the 12 houses of the zodiac and will kind of consolidate the energy that you've been working through. I suggest you guys listen to this carefully. This still applies in June and it gives you a good perspective on what was most important in your life and you can see how you connect to the energy while you watch. So I'm just shuffling. I'm using the Margaret Peterson Tarot. This is a, a very beautiful deck. I don't know how it films because of the detail. It's a high abstract deck and um, it's very, very beautiful. And I think the cards are coming up okay, but um, I definitely recommend it if you can find it because it's kind of out of print, I believe. Although it was reprinted two years ago in Germany. So if you guys are in love with it as much as I am, then this is how you can get it. And it's, I think in Argentina, I found some decks. I'm looking for a purple border deck of this. So if you have access to one, if you want to sell it, then please email me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have a bit of a cold today. I didn't get much sleep last night, so... Sorry about my voice, but I'm really committed to finishing these readings in the time frame that I have outlined for you. Also, today's reading is um, really in line with um, Mercury retrograde. I want to show you guys that even when there is five planets that are in retrograde motion, such as has begun now, um, you can still definitely work through energy and it's a great time to reflect and build upon the experiences that you've had. So it's a great, and, and this chest is full of uh, all sorts of cards. I kind of got this idea from my friend named Abraham, but he does it differently. You can go to his shop and then he just lets you pick a card and pay two bucks for it and then take it home. So what I did instead was just to put a bunch of cards in a box for readings just to really randomize the process so I don't really shuffle these but they're at random I don't know what what is what and so let's pick three cards for the oncoming uh, period of June to give us some guidance one two I know which this card is this is this is the card for Carol Herzer she's a card maker from Woodstock New York I'll show you guys. It's not a tarot card, but I know from the back what it is. So the first card that we have for Cancer is the Knight of Wands. This is the quick coming and going of the matters. This reminds you, Cancer, to be quick on your feet. 
Alternately, people who are fire signs may be coming in and out of your life. This could be a Leo, Sagittarius, Aries, but not necessarily so. This can be the onset of a quick moving relationship or also moving away from a relationship really quickly. So this can actually signify that there is some kind of double dealing with regard to a love partner. So if you are the person who's doing this, then check yourself and, and adjust your behavior. But if somebody around you is doing that, then, um, then just be aware or be, uh, be, have your, you know, uh, have your, uh, perception open to the prospect of that happening. Just so you know, Neptune is going direct, but that's in your ninth house of long distance travel and uh, higher education. This is going to really clarify some issues for you when it goes direct on the 13th of June. Um, about where you stand, uh, Jupiter has been confusing things quite a bit. It's in opposition to Jupiter right now in the third house. So you may figure out some things in a big way. So if you do feel like you need to come and go or or kind of do something else. Keep in mind, you won't want to wait about till mid-month before the first grand, grand Cross passes, before the Grand Trine dissipates once you absorb the positive effects of the Grand Trine, and then see how that settles in with you, and then make your choices about change and about possible movement. Okay, the next card, this is Carol Herzer's deck. This is a deck called The Spirit Speaks. The cards don't have meaning. They're just spirits, and so this spirit is with you this month, Cancer. They're beautiful cards. It's basically artwork, but there's not much to say about these cards when I read them. I have my impressions about them, and in a longer meditation, I would be able to derive some kind of conclusion, but if I were you guys, I would go by the energy of the card itself, the color scheme, the, the deep... Uh, purples and the blues and the white there is a spirit that is with you through this whole process divining from the universe and bringing forward protective energy for you so as you're going through your month come back and watch this close-up so you can absorb the energy of the card she is a beautiful card maker and i enjoy her work very much and the last card is the six of discs so the six of discs this is the alchemania tarot this is from japan and so this card reminds you at the end of the day, it's all about give and take. And you have Mercury in your 11th house of friendship and you benefit and hope in lots of new directions with regard to uh, your uh, opportunities, short distance travel, communication. If you're a writer of any kind, this is a wonderful time to write because you're getting both this uh, Grand Cross and Grand Trine energy. Grand Trine is supportive. Grand Cross is... Um, I wouldn't say not supportive, but definitely a more conflict-driven or oppositionally driven energy. So that provides for wonderful, interesting uh, writing, particularly fiction writing. So let's see what's here. The Daughter of Coins. The Daughter of Coins represents a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, young woman. This would be the onset of a new project or a new idea. So if you are looking to write, if you are looking to set up some kind of new new path for yourself and this is a a great seed of the idea that you're working through make sure that you're writing down your ideas at this time because daughter of coins ideas are fleeting so they may be in your mind and then all of a sudden they'll they'll go away and excuse me disappear from your life in some way so it's important that you keep um, on point with that remember that the energy that you're evolving to is the six of discs which is this two-way street it's not a one-way street anymore for you whether you are the one who's giving or the one who's receiving the fourth um, house this is your house and home we have no aspects in your house and home uh, cancer and here we see the six of swords so with regard to issues of the house you're going to be very good at re recognize, excuse me, you're going to be very good and stealth at recognizing the things that aren't working and moving on to more successful ways of conducting yourself. Um, this is, this includes moving on from circumstances that are no longer serving you. Remember, this is a very strategic uh, card. It is often called science, particularly in the Crowley decks. And so this represents the act of logically making decisions that are of betterment to your improvement to you and your life. Okay. The fifth house here represents um, 
children. It represents passion. It represents romantic relationships. Here we see a retrograding Saturn moving through uh, the fifth house in Scorpio until it reaches a uh, direct motion on at the end of the month on June 29th. This is going to be the last ditch effort to improve any past relationships before you move forward and make make a stand or make some changes. Here we see the emperor. So the emperor represents the father. This may be uh, an emphasis on your relationship with your father or a relationship with your own children through the role of a patriarchy. So when you're in charge and so forth. This can actually represent that your boyfriend girlfriend relationship is improving into a, a marriage or something very quite serious. You're looking at um, serious relationships and serious uh, arrangements for yourself are important for you right now and you're thinking about the future about how to make things work in the long run <coughs> so this is the energy leading up until June um, so yeah uh, the fifth house represents passions the drive and your drive is to create stability around yourself and comfort here is the the sixth house, sorry. The sixth house is fun, but you have Saturn retrograde through the sixth house at this time. This is one of the points of the double grade.